Welcome. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the CEO and founder of BizHack Academy. And today we are celebrating the extraordinary partnership with the Village of Pinecrest on a digital marketing training that touched literally hundreds of businesses around the world and dozens here in South Florida in the Village of Pinecrest, uh, a beautiful suburb of Miami. Today, we're gonna to hear from a number of incredible speakers, including the Honorable Joseph Corradino, Mayor of the Village of Pinecrest, really the architect, not only of this training, but of trainings uh, and other uh, CARES Act funded activities across Miami-Dade County. We're gonna hear from the Honorable Anna Hokemer, a council member who's had a long relationship with uh, BizHack Academy and actually brought BizHack Academy into the fold of the village. We're gonna hear from two amazing business owners, Cristobal Giri, uh, Giri of Machida Karate Miami. He is the representative of the dozens of storefront businesses along US-1 that participated in this training activity along Pinecrest Parkway. And then we also have Julie Jeffries, uh, a resident of Pinecrest and the founder of Not Your Mama's Vegetables, uh, which is a home-based business uh, based here in Pinecrest. She's not only a business owner, but a resident. Uh, two M's in Mama, sorry about that. And then very excitedly, we have another Pinecrest resident, the Vice President of News at WLRN, and my good friend, Tom Hudson, who's gonna be here talking about how does the work that we did together here in the village with small businesses fit into the larger context of what small businesses faced here in South Florida and across the country. And please stick around till the end. It'll be a 45 minute graduation ceremony and we will have a class photo at the end. So please do hang out with us till then. So I wanted to just take a minute and put into context why we're doing what we're doing. Yelp has been incredible with data about the impact of COVID-19 on its businesses. And according to Yelp, more than uh, nearly 100,000 storefronts have closed permanently. That's as of September. These have been disproportionately impacting restaurants, shopping and retail, and beauty and spas with bars and nightlife and fitness also massively impacted. And the reason why this is tremendously relevant is because this is Main Street. These are the businesses that give character to community. This is Pinecrest Parkway and the 350 storefronts in the mile and a half corridor along US-1 that we particularly targeted with this training. This is an unbelievable number of businesses. Other estimates from the government have said that nearly one in four small businesses have closed permanently due to COVID. And we are in the deepest, darkest recesses of winter. Uh, when we look at how difficult a holiday season we're going to be experiencing for many small businesses. This is a tremendous challenge to our economy where small businesses represent half of our economy and where they are the primary employer, especially in places like South Florida. And to make matters worth, worse and perhaps not surprisingly, the Yelp data suggests that this trend of permanent closure is accelerating as we get deeper into the expected winter flu season. And so uh, I, I shudder to think about what Q4 is gonna look like. There is hope and today is about hope. That's the most depressing thing I'm gonna share. Everything else about the next 40 minutes is about what we are doing locally about this epidemic, the pandemic and the epidemic on our economy and on small businesses. The Village of Pinecrest and BizHack Academy, a South Florida-based company, partnered on how to find customers online. We together sought funding from the CARES Act to do this training, and we launched this training in under two weeks after we got notice in October so that we could make it before the end of the year. The focus of this training was three things, low-cost best practices to market your small business online, tips and tools to bring back your current customers and to sell to strangers, and case studies of other small businesses that have pivoted their marketing to survive and thrive. The course included live classes, five hours of original instruction, one hour a week, 
with a repeat session. So that's 10 hours of live classes and then five hours per affected business in the village of Pinecrest of small group coaching. We actually had more than 40 hours of total curriculum that we delivered to the village of Pinecrest and its businesses in the last six weeks. The teaching team included myself as the lead instructor, Rafael Savino as a marketing coach, and then three other extraordinary marketing coaches, Gabriel Velez, Ricardo Barris, and Yoel Gutierrez. These folks were working hand in hand with Cristobal and Julie and their colleagues uh, to help these businesses take specific application of the best practices we were talking about in class and apply them to their businesses. Every session was recorded and available, still is available for later viewing. We also gave all of the PowerPoint presentations. We gave folks assignments that they could work on in their own time that they then workshopped in the small group coaching sessions. And we also added a, bu a bunch of additional resources. Most proudly, we have a 170 page uh, PowerPoint list of different softwares that each of us were recommending to one another. And so we were trying to, the theme of the training was stronger together and we were doing a lot of resource sharing and giving those to the group. We also had something called Follow Palooza in which we invited people to like, follow and share each other's recognizing that as a community we're stronger than as individuals. We also created a private Facebook group that ended up having nearly 200 members where there's been a very active conversation and frankly, a lot of self-promotion, which is exactly what we hoped for as people were trying to feature their businesses and to promote their products during this holiday season. With that, I wanted to take a minute and speak about the Honorable Joseph M. Corradino, mayor of the village of Pinecrest. Mayor Corradino is also the head of the Miami-Dade League of Cities. And he advocated that some of the CARES Act funding should trickle down to the municipal level. And there was apparently some uh, pushback on that notion from the county at first. The sense was that all of the needs of our local communities as it related to the COVID response were being met by county programs. Well, about half of the money that the county uh, raised from the Federal CARES Act has yet to be spent and it's expiring at the end of this calendar year. But we have seen a flowering of incredible programs. This is just one of many that were made possible by Mayor Corradino's work with the League of Cities and his advocacy on behalf of small but mighty municipalities like the village of Pinecrest. Thank you so much. Mayor Corradino, that all you've done on behalf of the residents of Pinecrest and as importantly for the residents of Miami-Dade County. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. You make me sound pretty good, but uh, but this is uh, in Pinecrest anyway, this is a team effort. This is uh, nobody could have done what we did here in Pinecrest if we weren't working together. Anna Hokemer um, our, on our village council, Katie Abbott, uh, our, our village manager, all the elected officials, Michelle Hammondtree is here with us today. And, um, you know, we, we wouldn't have been, uh, we wouldn't have accomplished as nearly as much as we did if we weren't working together as a team. So I'm, I'm glad everybody is here. I'm glad everybody's completed this program. And uh, Anna wanted me to go back and kind of talk about how we got here from Pinecrest perspective. And I'll do that. Uh, we, we were able to acquire some money from the, from the, uh, Miami-Dade County to do this. It almost didn't happen, however. Remember, way back in, in March of, uh, of this year, right after the pandemic had started, the federal government actually issued the CARES Act, right? It was, I think it was close to $2 trillion worth of money that was going to be spent to help uh, local businesses, families, employees, those types of things. Um, the money, it, oddly enough, came down from the federal government for local governments, but the, the local government that it hit was Miami-Dade County. Um, there was a size limitation on how small the government could be and no city really, except for Jacksonville, which is county size city in Florida was able to get this funding. So uh, uh, the Miami-Dade County League of Cities uh, Board of Directors of which uh, Anna Hokemer and myself are on the board had been coordinating with Miami-Dade County uh, to deal with the protocols that were happening in the response to COVID. Really fascinating stuff. 
because there were no rules. We had to kind of make things up as we we're going along. We realized we got this money. It's $477 million worth of funds. And we said, okay, Mr. Mayor, Mid County Mayor, how, how would you like to split this money up? And the mayor looked at us and said, what do you mean split it up? It came to Miami-Dade County. We're going to distribute it. And of course, that raised alarm bells because, um, look, the county's very good at certain things, and they're very bad at certain things. And, and the cities are very good at distributing the funds uh, on the hyper-local level. We kind of understand our businesses, our environments there. Um, and so we got into a negotiation with Miami-Dade County about how to split the money up. And it, it, this, remember the money came out in, in March, we're starting to talk in July and August uh, and September. And a lot of times the negotiations got heated. It was a long battle. Um, it was, uh, it, it, it got kind of got ugly at times, but what the League of Cities was able to do was to galvanize the 34 cities in the county, bring them all together and, um, and uh, uh, secure some funds. Now it wasn't as, as we would had wished, we wanted to split it by population. Uh, we weren't able to do that, but we got some money. So what I'm really happy to say is that Pinecrest came up with some very creative programs. Uh, and this is one of them. And we're able to allocate all of the money that we had received through the CARES Act. Um, I'm sad to say that uh, Miami-Dade County hasn't, last time I checked, spent uh, a lot of money hasn't been spent and unfortunately, it's going to go back into the into the kitty for the next round. Um, and, and in the, that sense, uh, we lost tremendous opportunity here uh, and uh, they just haven't been able to spend it. So it's it's uh, luckily that we have 34 local governments that are creative. They understand their constituent base. They understand their citizens and their businesses, and they're able to, to spend the money efficiently and effectively. So. Uh, in close, I just want to thank you for being here. After sitting on the front lines of this negotiation um, and the management of the pandemic, I very much believe that the way we're going to operate in the future, the way we're going to do business looks very similar to the way we do it now, more so than it looked, say, at, at this time last year. I think what COVID has done to us is accelerate uh, some changes in the fabric of society and fundamentally changed uh, the way we do business, the way we learn, the way we live. And we're likely going to be able to take many of the things we learned from this COVID experience and permanently adopt them, right? Nobody wants to live like this forever, but there have been positive things. And I think, uh, I think this, this type of exercise that you all learned here is one of those positive things. And the, the problem that we have is these changes happen so rapidly, uh, it's hard to adapt. And I think this course is really a, an adaption primer. Like you've done it, uh, you look, we're, we're close to the end of this thing. Um, did anybody really believe we could make some ra such rapid changes in such a challenging environment? I didn't. If I was asked to do this this time last year, I would have said, there's no way we're going to make it through it. But we did it. We're just about through this. If we can do this, think about it. We can do anything, any challenge that uh, is ever going to impact us. And you all are on the front lines. And yet, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Dan, Anna, Katie, Michelle, everybody. We love you. You all did great work. And thanks for being part of Pinecrest. Thank you for that. Thank you for what you've done for small businesses and for residents. Um, we're, we're very grateful. And frankly, you know, speaking uh, for, about the lack of leadership that we've seen at the national uh, and, and even at the state level, it is so great, gratifying that uh, we are seeing help come uh, at the local level. And, and that's where all politics really begins. Um, before I uh, welcome Council Member Hokemer, I did want <clears throat> to make sure that we recognize uh, the other council members who are on this call right now. Um, I did see council member, uh, the Honorable Katie Abbott. Um, are there any other council members who are on um, this call? I just wanna make sure that we do recognize them. Well, while we're looking, I did wanna say that I had a lot of interaction with council member Abbott who is a phenomenal talent in addition to being a public servant, she is herself a small business owner. Rather than out her, because nobody knew about it until I found out about it, because uh, it's a new business, she's actually in the gift guide that we're gonna talk about. So in a sense, this is your uh, going public moment and uh, council member, I'm very happy that you participated in this as a participant, as a business owner, as a council member, and I, I'm very grateful for our conversations together. 
I wanted to welcome Council Member Hokemer, uh, who is a, a dear friend, someone whom I've worked with now for a number of years, someone who has participated in BizHack Academy training to help her with her own political efforts. And she's also introduced this training to help the village of Pinecrest more effect, be more effective in its work. Uh, Council Member, thank you for uh, making this all possible in a very different way than the work you've done in the Miami-Dade League of Cities by putting your name and your credibility behind us as a small business here in South Florida. And this has been on a personal level, uh, an absolutely transformative experience for BizHack Academy, one that will bode well for us and our, our goals in 2021. So thank you for the vote of confidence. My pleasure, Dan. I'm so glad that we're here and I'm so glad that we've reached this moment of culmination of the project. Uh, obviously, I followed along from the summer when the, the federal money was just uh, a, an idea, a, a gleam in somebody's eye in Washington, D.C. I participated at an arm's distance from the negotiations with the county to get a portion of those CARES Act funds into the hands of the municipalities. And then we had a fantastic moment of synergy where we had a council that was interested in pursuing it. Uh, we had staff that was interested in doing something creative and groundbreaking, and we happened to be able to find the perfect partner in a local small business that had the knowledge base, had the technical understanding, and had the capacity to scale and ramp up and do something truly innovative. This was more than just a handout, which a great many of the CARES Act dollars have been for. And while the Village of Pinecrest has done rent abatements and other direct aids to our small businesses, it seemed to me and to the rest of the council that approved this initiative that this was a moment to really teach our small businesses how to fish. So much of the knowledge that is required to take advantage of, this, of the social media marketing opportunities that are available in the 21st century are difficult for small businesses, nigh impossible for small businesses to afford to contract on a professional level. And so in order for these small businesses that are the backbone and the lifeblood of cities up and down Miami-Dade County to pivot to this new reality, we knew that we were gonna have to get the knowledge into their hands. And this was the way that we came up with it. Staff was able to pivot, staff was writing white papers, we were talking to one another about how to get other people to understand exactly what we wanted to deliver. There was an, 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 an issue from the staff side of communicating with our local businesses and getting them to understand what we were asking them to sign up for. And over and over and over again, what we saw were individuals at all levels of government and at all levels of business that were willing to be creative and step up and do something that nobody had done before. And so this is a fantastic moment where you can see something that starts in Washington, D.C., iterate down through all of the levels of government down to the hyper-local level and see people on the ground, whether they're doing a storefront business or they're doing it from home, really reaping the benefits of, uh, of funding that is supposed to, to help get us through this most difficult, difficult year. So I'm, th I'm, I'm thrilled to see how many people have completed the program. And what I'm really, really excited about is that right now this means that this is reproducible and this is scalable. Hypothetically, what we've done here with BizHack and with our local businesses can be replicated across the country and in countries around the world. Anyone who has the funding and has the initiative now has a blueprint that can be carried out and replicated over and over and over again for our small businesses as we come out of these difficult times. So thank you, Dan, for allowing me to come and allowing me to speak. And I'm going to move our conversation on to the first presentation, which is by uh, Cristobal Giddy, who is the uh, uh, owner of a local karate dojo uh, who took advantage of the BizHack training and was, I guess, the valedictorian of the storefront class. And Cristobal, I'm gonna hand it off to you so that you can show us what you learned. Well, uh, first off, I wanna, I wanna thank everybody for the opportunity. This couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, council, council member, I am so grateful. I have been, as a business owner, looking for my, um, to learn about trends and exactly the, problem you outlined before is how to go and fish and um, with Dan now 
we uh, we have done some substantial work, and I'm very excited for for next year. So um, I'll begin my presentation. Um, our our academy is Machida Karate uh, Machida Karate Miami. We are the pilot academy for the Odo and Shinzo Machida of uh, of the UFC, and we this is. Uh, Uh, a little bit about me. I come from uh, Santiago, Chile. My father taught me karate from the age of four years old. Um, he was a well-known architect in Chile, uh, but when we moved here, he, he had to start all over. He always practiced karate and opened his karate studio here in 1985 just to continue his practice and opened it in Pinecrest in 1992 in our current location. He um, he did, he, he did a lot of hard work because he did all that with uh, a sick wife and, and two kids at home. So he was very devoted to his karate. In high school, I followed, after high school, I did my own thing, tried to find some work and direction until the call came from my father um, that he was sick and dying of lung cancer and he wanted me to continue the academy. Of course I did, this is a, the most important thing in our lives. And so for the past two decades, I've run the academy in, in Pinecrest with the same values that he uh, instilled upon my sister and myself. At Machida Karate, we knew our client pretty well. We knew that we had youth programs, uh, our little dragons programs for children eight, four to six years old that allows them to understand how to behave and how the karate's philosophies can help them and develop some self-control. The youth samurai program, kids seven and 11, they develop some physical attributes and learn a little bit of deeper values. And the teen tigers, they, they develop skill, they test themselves and they try to uh, grow into mature young adults. Our adult program, we have it separated by beginners and advanced so that students can have varying levels of challenge. Our pre-COVID situation it was uh, us really shooting in the dark because we knew we had some important components to take advantage of, but we really didn't know how to leverage them or how they function. I had a Squarespace website. I used Google My Business and AdWords. Uh, ineffective use of Instagram. I, I have a good following, but I had no turnover on that. Um, our client list got little use and I was very reliant on word of mouth. So I was, needless to say, I was overwhelmed in doing everything and teaching classes was one of them. Um, since COVID um, closed our business, closed our doors, we decided, we thought, well, of course, you know, we have two options, either we power or we and go all in. So we bought a new sign right out of the gate and I got very involved in developing uh, young and certified instructors. They certify in this very same way that I certify through the same instructorship program, it has varying levels, it's very profound. I have been doing this instructorship program for, this is gonna be our sixth year for me. So um, I'm very proud of them for being able to do it and taking their time out of their schedule, school and responsibilities to do it. Um, of course, safety and sanitation practices had to change. We installed an additional air conditioner unit an air scrubber. We keep doors open during training. We implement the disinfecting routines and uh, provide sanitation uh, stations for our guests. Also, we change our business model to become a boutique academy. So, which is something we were doing anyways, because we value quality. So in size of class, we lost some of that quality. We had made that adjustment last year, November. Now we get to implement with a, a scheduling system. And Dan's gift to me, I'm gonna say thank you so much, is the understanding of how to get people to come in the door. Um, we have all these avenues, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Google, Facebook, TikTok, and Yelp, and we need to be on all of them. However, we can be showing people who we are and presenting them an irresistible offer like Dan taught us, for me, in my case, it's a free private session. 
it's a introduction, it's one-on-one -on -one time, it's an assessment, it's an it's I get to extend what I what our program is, and people get to experience karate through me in a safe way. You know? um, we bring this to our website. We take we have two landing pages, one adult, one youth program, and then we collect email and phone. Um, we use email and phone to communicate health and health through karate practice, which is a you know it's the number one thing we are. We really want to uh, promote karate's modern relevance, which is helping people be their best potential self through rational nutrition, sensible exercise, rest, hygiene, and a positive attitude. And we provide an environment that feels that way at our academy. Also promoting food in the door offers and getting a lot of video footage out there, rotating, showing everybody that we're safe and ready to serve the community. Oh, sorry, wrong way. We are doubling down on grassroots marketing. We're collaborating with Julie and Not Your Mama's Vegetables. Um, perhaps a special programs, um, attacking ADHD from a, uh, perhaps a approaching ADHD for kids with, you know, needs through practice and through diet, a, do a dual prone approach would be a good thing, I think. This is something that Julie and I are working with, are working on. And uh, also, I want to leverage our endorsements. We happen to have some celebrity that we learn from. So um, leveraging what they have to say about us and how they feel about what we do is also very important. I won't run the, the, the video because it has, uh, we don't transfer the audio. But anyways, that's really what we've done. We've set the frame for the new year. And it's all really thanks to you, Dan, Yoel, Lillian. I'm very grateful um, for the time that you took to guide me and to get me out of my comfort zone because running a business like this, when you're running all aspects of it, you're, I'm doing everything from cleaning to running the classes, to welcoming and onboarding people, to dealing with a special need a student may have. So Anna, you, uh, Katie, you know firsthand how my day kind of goes. <laughs> so. It can be overwhelming and and you know um this thanks to you guys katie anna the village everybody i'm so grateful and thank you so much for the opportunity all right sorry thank you well i just want to say before i let uh uh the council member uh do the second introduction is that it has been really a joy uh to work with you and to see the amazing strides you've made in just six weeks and Cristobal will continue to work with you and continue to support the improvements that you're making to your business because you are an important part of this community and we need you to survive this. So we're here for you. Thank you very much. You're here. Congratulations, Cristobal. Uh, it's fantastic to see that our storefronts are getting the support they need. We're gonna move on to Julie Jeffries who runs a home-based business called Not Your Mama's Vegetables. Interestingly, uh, her content over the past month has changed on Instagram enough so that I noticed quite uh, organically on my Instagram feed that suddenly uh, here's a minute or two of Julie talking to me about how to prepare breakfast. I should watch this, right? And so as somebody who's inside uh, Julie's geofence, I was watching her content improve in real time as she took biz hack. So I'm gonna turn it over to Julie, the valedictorian of the home-based business and hear about what biz hack was able to help her learn how to do over the next six weeks. Thank you, Anna. Can you guys see my screen? Oh, just your name. Oh, you still can't see it. Bella, come help me. Sorry, I thought I had it down pat. <laughs> yes. Oh, here, wait. We can try one more time, Julie, and then if not. Oh, here, here. No, I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. Give me a second. There you go. Okay, it's there? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Thank you, Anna, for that introduction. And I'm really happy to hear that you are uh, noticing the changes because um, I've been working very hard. And um, a lot of that is um, thanks to the, the effort and the work that's been um, 
that's been put in by Dan and, and Lilia and the whole team and all the coaching and um, it's been very much appreciated on, on my part for sure. So um, just a little bit about uh, Not Your Mama's Vegetables. I offer personalized health coaching and group plant rich lifestyle classes, corporate employee programs and public and motivational speaking. In, 20, in 2013, I was a successful uh, international business executive who needed a pair of glasses. What I, um, what I got was actually a prescription for radiation to the head. I was diagnosed with a rare and inoperable brain tumor and I was told that my vision loss was permanent and I needed to stop the growth of the tumor and uh, to prevent further damage. But I couldn't believe that radiation with all of its side effects was my only option. So I did my own research and I made the connection between diet and health. I radically changed my diet and within weeks, my permanent vision loss started to reverse itself, something that my team of medical experts could not understand. Within a year, which also included a subsequent diagnosis of breast cancer, I had 20-20 vision for the first time in my life. I recovered my vision against all medical odds by eating more veggies and 100% whole grains while eliminating added sugars and processed foods. I believe that everyone can achieve better health by eating more vegetables. I'm Julie Jeffries. I am the founder and chief onion of Not Your Mama's Vegetables, and I'm on a mission to get people to eat more veggies. So my challenge uh, was my marketing strategy. Um, it had been, I had been filling my classes by word of mouth prior to COVID. And I was actually doing pretty well. Um, my classes filled up quickly. I had a, a good following and I was, um, like Cristobal said, my days were kind of crazy and a little bit overwhelming with everything that was going on. But I was feeling fortunate because I had um, a lot of, a lot of um, momentum behind what I was working on. But then COVID-19 exposed the weaknesses in my marketing strategy, uh, which included the fact that I had no website. I didn't have a mailing list to drive pe people to my coaching efforts. And my Instagram, as Anna mentioned, uh, wasn't attracting the right, the right audience. Um, and I had also um, started to back off or I had backed off on um, creating local partnerships to drive business because I was, I was really um, full, my, my practice was full. So um, when COVID-19 hit, of course, all of those things kind of stopped and um, some of the solutions that were put in place was, um, first of all, with the, uh, with the impetus of, of starting this biz, has, this biz hack class, I uh, felt that I needed to legitimize myself for my fellow, uh, my fellow student uh, participants and I launched a, my own website. I did it myself. Um, it's not it's not perfect by any means, but what I've learned is that um, perfection is overrated, and it's better just to get it out there and um, deal with it as as things come and start to change as I as I learn new new ideas, um, which definitely I learned through BizHack. Um, BizHack taught me to create an irresistible offer, and with that, I managed to get it um, fifty or more downloads from for an ebook that I offered, which means that I got uh, fifty new emails and um, and names to add to my client mailing list. Um, and then, um, as Anna mentioned, I've been shifting my online Im my online image to better represent my health consultancy uh, business, as opposed to just being known for uh, being a plant based chef. And um, that was definitely reaffirmed by everything that I that I learned by with BizHack. So some of my aha moments were, of course, the power of the customer list. These are things that I learned through um, this program with with Dan and his team. Um, I didn't realize um, how much of the digital world relate, uh, relates to what's on my customer list and how I can use that to target ads and create lookalike audiences that really can move my business forward. I also learned that it's not about my number of followers on Instagram because that's a feel good metric. It's more about getting them and driving them to my coaching and converting them into clients. Um, I, I've been changing my content and using my content to attract more of my ideal customers. So with BizHack's um, help, I've been able to reaffirm what my actual ideal customer is and focusing on life, healthy li lifestyle and driving those to my, to my business. And the biggest thing I think that, that BizHack has done for me and um, that I'm 
truly appreciative for not only for BizTech, but for Pinecrest for offering this course um, it, within our community is that I've realized that I'm not, I'm not alone in my struggles because as a small business, um, at, I think many of you have the same understanding that um, it, it's, over, it's overwhelming and um, COVID not only isolated us in terms of our family and our social dynamics, but in terms of business and um, exchange of ideas, it really isolated us uh, tremendously. But this program actually was amazing because um, it connected all of us, the small businesses within Pinecrest and even outside of Pinecrest to each other. And we were able to openly discuss our concerns and our weaknesses and um, not feel like, like we were in um, a judgmental space, but we were in a very safe space to do that. And um, it made you feel like, okay, I'm not as far behind or I'm not struggling as much as any more than anyone else is. Um, and I can definitely move this forward. So, um, you know, I told Dan this before, but um, when this program started, I was actually in the midst of interviewing to go back to corporate America. And um, because I had not only been hit by the shutdowns, um, but also I, I got sick with COVID and was unable to work for three months, which um, truly affected my bottom line. Um, but because of all of this, I've got, I've been re-energized, uh, reconnected to my fellow small business owners, and I'm not giving up, guys. So uh, my next steps from uh, my work with BizHack are um, not coming up here. <laughs> to build up my list of potential customers, I've already started to launch a Start the New Year Right campaign using the ad, um, the ad learnings and the ad technology that I've learned through BizHack. Um, I've started to meet with other uh, local businesses on how we can work together and be stronger together, like Chris Dobel said, but I've also met with some other um, area small businesses, and I'm really excited about that. Um, and I've, I've set an ad budget, and I'm planning to use it, and I'm going to be outsourcing um, some of the functions that are outside of my core competencies. So all of these came from my the time that I spent focusing on my business with um, the, this BizHack training. And I really, in the um, overall, just want to say thank you. Um, you know, you kind of explain how this came about, but I don't know who actually came up with the idea to um, hire BizHack and have BizHack uh, present this information um, and offer it out to us. But for me, this has been um, an amazing opportunity to really focus on um, my business and on what I need to do, as opposed to just playing catch up. Um, and it, it. Kind of legitimized the um, the idea that that is what we need to do right now as small businesses, and that's okay to spend that time doing that. Um, so I really want to thank BizHack. I want to thank um, the the village of, of Pinecrest, um, Joe, Anna, Katie, um, Doug, and Shannon. You're not here, but you know I know all of you are behind this, and um, really an amazing effort. Uh, Michelle, you you did a great job getting this out to the public, and um, I really hope that with some of those funds that are still <laughs> unallocated, that maybe you can run it again for um, businesses that didn't get it the first time around, because I, I think that this program is invaluable and um, can help so many other businesses that I've already talked to in Pinecrest. So um, thank you guys, and thank you to my fellow classmates for being there and sharing and um, allowing all of us to, to have the time together, because we really are stronger together. So that's, that's it for me. And um, I'll stop my broadcast. You know, you couldn't, you're such a beautiful speaker, Julie, and such a great uh, and powerful example and um, such an inspirational soul. I, I'm so thrilled that you didn't give up. And we and this community are here for you. And as you said, the theme of the training was stronger together. Uh, you know, digital marketing is a set of tools, but a community uh, of love and support is really what we were about creating. And um, you beautifully represent that. Um, and that is what BizHack and the Village of Pinecrest are all about. We had some physical manifestations of that Stronger Together community. Um, breathtaking holiday gift guide put together on a, uh, on an incredibly rapid pace by the amazing team at the Village of Pinecrest. This is now uh, published and available on your website and being promoted across all digital channels of the Village of Pinecrest. This is uh, more than a dozen, uh, two dozen businesses in the village, both storefront and home-based that have given offers that are uh, 
better than what they normally offer to try to encourage locals to buy local, to buy small. And um, we're, we're so thrilled with the physical representation of the Stronger Together theme through this gift guide. This is more than just a set of coupons. Every single one has an irresistible offer, which was part of the curriculum that we taught, a uh, free irresistible offer to get people in for the first time, sell to strangers. But it also includes uh, sometimes incredibly moving stories of me, how and why they run their business. And you could see both Cristobal talking about his father and Julie talking about her health scare. These small business owners are motivated by far more than money. Um, they are not simply making a living. They are committed entrepreneurs who have a deep reason for doing what they do. And the gift guide highlights and celebrates that as much as their businesses. We also created, as I mentioned earlier, a follow Palooza. This is a list of more than uh, 400 businesses that participated in the training in one form or another, sharing their social media presences and inviting others to like and follow. And the contract that we've made with one another is if they follow you, you'll follow them back. So for folks like Julie and Cristobal who are looking to increase their presence, this is a friendly list of people to like and follow and to do business with. I also, we also created from the suggested list of my instructors, as well as the participants, this unbelievable resource, which is, this is just half of the slides, um, uh, a recommended software. This is the power that we can have if we pool our resources and work together. I wanted to say thank you to Madame Manager uh, Yoselin Galliano and her incredible staff. You guys have been unbelievable and have given me so much hope and renewed faith in the power of local government to do good. I wanted to welcome my dear friend, former colleague from WLRN, the Vice President of News of WLRN, the NPR Miami station, Tom Hudson. He's going to say a little, a few words about how what we're doing here in little old village of Pinecrest fits into the county, state, and national picture. Tom, welcome. Dan, thank you very much. It's incredibly important work. Uh, thanks for the invitation to say a few words. Uh, hello to the mayor, hello to the council members. Great to see some old friends and of course neighbors here in Pinecrest. First, just congratulations to the graduates, right? A big congratulations. You know, moments of gratitude and celebration are important at every moment in this journey that you guys are taking. Uh, your businesses that you're creating are it is the economic inoculation that our communities need to help fend off long lasting effects brought on by this pandemic to the economy. It's never easy to operate a small business. Um, and for those that have had years of experience and then hit by the COVID-19 pandemic knows that, know this, the, the, the virus has exposed again, all the vulnerabilities and the importance of your ideas as fundamental medicine to a healthy and prosperous economy. I can't emphasize that enough. It really is the bedrock of building a sustainable economy. Uh, just as the volunteers over the last several months have rolled up their sleeves across the world to uh, take experiments about uh, fueling the science for new vaccines, your ambition, your ingenuity, your dedication is going to help local communities with jobs and with sales and confidence for weeks and months and years to come. So I just wanna share just two short stories about small business operators here in South Florida that have responded to these challenges of staying in business during the pandemic while also planning for the future because that's the difficult thing. When your head is down, your business is operating you. When you can lift your head up and do these kind of classes that Dan has offered here and the, through the village of Pinecrest, you are now operating your business. And these stories, I think, highlight the skills and most importantly, really the mindset that's needed from small business leaders like yourselves. Uh, Madison Coach had uh, big confidence to open a restaurant in Miami. Uh, after all, he'd been selling food uh, on a food truck for a number of years and had had great success for it. He invested in a small space uh, he got all the kitchen gear, spent all the money on the counters and the tables and chairs. He hired workers and he opened up El Bagel on March 1st. Now, remember back on March 1st, right? Things 
just started to look a little bit different. Well, in two weeks, he wound up closing his front door because of the pandemic. And he began really pivoting his business. He kept customers out of his store entirely. He said, it's not right to come into here. But he kept making bagels. He was making about 800 to 850 bagels a day. He would post on Instagram when they were ready. He would post the menu about the types of bagels that were available that day. Orders were taken online. They were paid for online. Customers would then get a text message when their food was ready, and then they'd pick it up at the front door. None of that was in place on March 1st when he opened up. El Bagel still to this day is operating with this model. Uh, it still sells out bagels most days in just a few hours. And this was not his plan in early March, but it's been successful in saving the business. It's been keeping jobs and he's been continuing to serve his community. He's even returned to the food truck now for an occasional pop-up as a way to continue to diversify and get word out. Uh, you know, um, you've heard the word at least a couple of times even today about pivoting during the pandemic. You've probably had to do some pivoting yourself. We saw from Cristobal and Julie, congratulations on the success that you found in pivoting. Some of these old rules of business are just being rewritten on a weekly, daily, sometimes even hourly um, scenario, right? Well, uh, Madison had planned for people to be crowded into his bagel counter, shoulder to shoulder, right? Have the the, the loudness of, of a lunch counter. That's what he was building for. But he had to shift in a moment's notice, not really knowing what he was shifting to, not even knowing where the toolbox was, let alone what tools he may have to be able to make it a success. But his customers stuck with him. He found new customers because he stayed focused on his vision of what he wanted to create. One other story I just wanted to share with you here was, is the story of Pilar Guzman Zavala. Um, when this year began 12 months ago, she had 13 outposts and over 100 employees spread across Miami-Dade County selling empanadas. She's the co-founder of a company called Half Moon Empanadas. She had counters at the Miami Beach Convention Center, two of them. She had counters at, on campus at FIU and at University of Miami, and she had two counters at Miami International Airport. Successful business. It was growing like gangbusters. She had big plans for 2020, and then within weeks, Miami Beach Convention Center closed, FIU and UM closed campuses, Miami International Airport, right? Nobody was flying all of a sudden. So she opened up uh, Ventanita at her main kitchen. She kept as many jobs as she could. She competed and won for a contract to provide meals for seniors in Miami-Dade County, something she'd never done before. She had no delivery mechanism, no packaging mechanism, figured it all out within days. And she kept investing in her vision. This is what I found so remarkable about her story. She did all this pivoting while at the same time continuing to look beyond the horizon of the end of business today or next week or next month. She launched a digital rebranding effort uh, that was a year and a half and $25,000 in the making in October. She kept investing in that despite the downturn in business. By the end of the year, her vision of scaling her business nationally is back in a big way. She's talking with retail partners to open up spaces here in South Florida. Uh, she's exploring a frozen food version of her empanadas to uh, broaden the distribution. And she's even won a deal to open up a store inside Denver International Airport, her first non-South Florida location. So she never lost the vision of this company that she had so many years ago. She lives it every day. She shares it with her partners, with her customers. And one of the things that's always struck me about Pilar is she also takes the time to reflect and to be grateful for her opportunities uh, that her hard work has created for herself and for others. Now, these are just two examples. There's plenty more that your classmates have about how small business owners are working to really be the medicine to help heal this economy and, and create a stronger one in the future as we, as we pull out of this pandemic. Small companies, especially new companies, create the most jobs. This is what the economic research has told us time and time again, regardless of the shape of the economy, the size of the economy. It is, it is new companies and small companies that create new jobs and new opportunities. And maybe it's just a handful of jobs. Maybe it's just one job. Maybe it's your job. But that's the most important one. You know, Congress, even as we're talking here, is debating a new COVID stimulus plan. Local governments like Miami-Dade County, uh, uh, Pinecrest have created loan programs directed at businesses. These efforts are important. They tend to come with unintended consequences um, about who and how the money gets allocated. And they, they address 
what I would say is the economic effects of the pandemic, which are important, but it's your passion, it's your creativity, it's your grit as small business owners, as entrepreneurs that really are the economic cure for what ails this economy. So congratulations, be grateful. Here's to a happy and healthy and successful future for you and your community. Thank you for everything that you do. Happy holidays. I hope everybody's healthy and happy. And again, congratulations for making it through here. And I can't wait to see what's next for you in our community. Thank you so much, Tom, for those uh, amazing inspirational words. And, you know, this comes really close to home. Uh, Tom's uh, obviously a dear friend. Uh, he's a Pinecrest resident. His wife participated in some of the trainings and she's, her name is about to be read as one of the certificate holders. I'm very grateful for all that you do, Tom, for us and our community to keep us informed during these difficult times. I also want to say that BizHack itself is a small business that has uh, been enormously helped by Pinecrest. We had participants in this training from uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, we had a participant from Pakistan, Dubai, Ghana, Nigeria, seven countries in Latin America, London. Uh, we are an international world and an international city and with the help of Village of Pinecrest, BizHack is becoming an international business. So thank you for that. Um, I wanted to take a minute before we read the names of the certificates and then have a fabulous musical surprise if you can stick with us. Uh, to take a class photo. Uh, would like that everybody who's on this call right now to just grip and grin. Uh, Lilia is gonna be taking a photo of us all. Um, and then we wanna just document the, the 40 plus brave souls that are here today to celebrate Pinecrest and its businesses. And then uh, I'm looking forward to reading the names of the 51 participants. And then we are wrapping up with a, a musical surprise. Nobody on this call, but Lilia and me and Ricardo know about this. So I hope you do hang with us uh, for the reading of the names and, and then we'll have that musical surprise. So uh, Lilia, let us know when you're ready. Great. Yeah, so as Joel said, please turn on your cameras. Uh, Roya, uh, well, we have plenty of them. Yeah, because then if you turn your camera, I can see them um, on your grid, okay? So we have several screens. So I need for you to keep your eyes open. I will tell you when. So, okay, first screen, one, two, three, smile. Okay, good. Um, people with, with masks, that's great. Okay, moving to the next screen. So one, two, three, perfect. We have another one. So keep your eyes open, smile. One, two, three, perfect. Thank you. Lilia, you are, you're gonna be a great um, mom for prom. Uh, thank you for that. Um, let's celebrate um, Pinecrest businesses. And I wanted to talk about the impact of this training by the numbers. We had an extraordinary 1,049 registrants worldwide for how to find customers online. When we put the names of the businesses and the registrants into a word art, what came out I thought was extraordinary. Global independent group. Um, these were the most common names that reappeared in the titles of these companies. And I don't think I could think of a better way to describe the training and the, the attitude and the commitment of the folks who participated in it. It also appears that Amy is a very common name for entrepreneurs. We held 43 different individual training sessions as part of this. We had four marketing coaches. We held bonus coaching sessions. I myself led 10 hour long trainings. It was an extraordinary amount of resources poured into a very small amount of time and we saw the results. You can see here on a scale of one to 10, most people came into this course against these learning objectives, self-reporting a three or four in terms of their knowledge. We assess them at the middle and then we assess them again after the fifth class and fifth coaching session. And we consider basic mastery uh, a seven. And so you can see that though we did not achieve basic mastery across all of the learning objectives, we did across more than half and we're very, very proud uh, of that result. Another measure is that we started with a digital marketing test out of 500 points and then we administered the test again at the end. And you can see that in just five weeks, 
uh, with a relatively uh, intense period, we were able to increase knowledge uh, on the digital marketing test by 11%. Um, the way I would conclude about this is we got part of the way there and we have a ways to go. This is really the beginning of a learning journey, not the end. We had a total of 51 Pinecrest businesses trained. And now I wanna welcome the, I wanna read the certificates. All of these folks will be getting a digital certificate in the coming days. Uh, and I'm gonna now read their names. Alex Sanchez of Bean Automotive Group. Byron Kibort of The Runner's High. Carola Bravo of HeartVest Project, one of our nonprofits. Catalina Vargas of 101 Auto, Auto Care. Catherine Bartell of Learning Express Toy Store of Pinecrest. Chinadu Okoro of Continental Global Service. Claudia Taboada of Young Living. Cristobal Giddy of Machida Karate Miami. Deborah Wellens of Deborah Wellens Realty. Demetrius Harvales of Elia Pinecrest. Eileen Carrion of Indigo Republic Boutique. Estella Carmona of Studio 55 and Spa and Boutique. Fred Kettler of Kettler Financial. Hal Feldman of Miami Hal at Remax. Harold Hui at Premier Dental Care Center. Howard Tendrich of Heritage House. Iris Lemus of Rump Shakers Studio. James Justin of Millennium Eye Center. Jane Moore of Papagayo Luxury Travel. Jane actually ran ads inspired by this course and generated 41 leads for her business. Joanna Baruch of Second Showing. Jose Casanova, architect and urban planner. Julie Jeffries, who you've all met, of Not Your Mama's Vegetables, congratulations. Katie Abbott of OneLaughingLlama.com. Everybody go and check it out. It's beautiful, handcrafted work that uh, launched two weeks before this. And if you weren't already convinced that Katie Abbott was multi-talented and incredibly um, diverse in her knowledge and expertise, check out OneLaughingLlama.com. Sorry, Katie, I'm embarrassing you. Kim Foster, graphic designer. Leanne Snyder of Dream Dinners Pinecrest. Lynette Shirazi of My Tribe Boutique. Luz Marin of Luz Ma Aesthetics. Madeline Manasco of Tefl. Marcia Rubin of The Crystal Carrot. Maria Bucariano of Eric's Outboard Marine Services. Maria Corina Vegas of Non-For-Profit Gun Control. Marika Lynch, who outed Katie on her behalf of Marika Lynch Communications, Martha Melgarejo of Spectacular Nails and Skin Salon, Maylene Munoz of Suckman Realty Retail Group, Meadow Garish of the Meadow Collective, Mirna Gonzalez of Artesa Marketplace, Mitchell Kaplan of Books and Books, Natalia Cardona as of Asbab Success, Nightingale Ngo of Nightingale Ngo Piano. Omar Bembry of Earth's Naturals, Philip Lightman of Suckman Retail Group, Rashmi Iran of Ethics Integrated, Romina Polo of Code Art, another nonprofit, Shara Span, a little off the top hair studio, Stephen Harriman of Belltone Guitars, Susan Green, PhD, Tara Knudsen, very close to Tom, a beautiful children's book author, his wife, Vanessa Echevarria of Career Exchange, Wendy Diaz of Ink Impressions, and finally, always last but never least, Zinat Siman of Firefly Bridge Organizing Services. With that, I wanted to welcome my colleague, uh, one of the marketing coaches, Ricky Anthony, AKA marketing coach Ricardo Barris, who's going to talk about the song that he wrote uh, in part on behalf of the Pinecrest businesses to celebrate our achievement together. And uh, Ricardo, I'm not sure if you're on, but Thank if you. not. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Well, thank you guys. Uh, congratulations for making it uh, to this stage. Please know that this is not the end, but the beginning. You have so much opportunity ahead of you. And I, I, I know from coaching some of you and from talking to my other colleagues that you have you, your position for great things. Um, I wrote this song. Music is something that I love. And uh, not sure I have the best voice, but I do think that if you listen to the message, which is which is what I'd like for you to listen to here uh, today, you will be able to then extract um, 
uh, from here, something that you can take take away and always remember. And so this is this is our, our, our tribute to you. Just taking our hats off to you. The song is titled Hats Off to You because uh, it only takes incredible determination and persistency throughout a season that we're in today. Um, the difficulties that we've gone through, like we've had people that were just really close to us, lost uh, parents, lost several individuals in the same weekend. We've had businesses, we've had mothers who had to be teachers and business owners and principal and, and wives uh, while being treated for COVID. So there's been a tremendous amount of experience that we've endured uh, this year. And we are still here. For those of us who are, who are here listening to this conversation, hats off to you because you did what uh, you needed to do and instead of giving up, which a lot of people have done this year, you fought through and through. And if you keep doing that, I think uh, you will have an incredible year in the next, uh, the next 12 months. And so that, that's really the song and the essence of it. So congratulations and thanks to Dan, the Rainmaker for Digital Marketing. Um, he's an incredible, awesome friend, colleague, and I, I, I love him to death. And so I, I, I know that you guys um, can appreciate that as well. So congratulations and hats off to you. Thank you everyone for being a part of this and for being so supportive of local businesses in South Florida. Have a very safe and healthy holidays and we'll see you in 2021. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, Cristobal and Julie. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Council Member Abbott. <laughs> thank you everybody for, uh, thank you, Yossi. Uh, can't, can't thank you enough. Your team has been amazing. Jane Moore, Luce, Roya, Yoel, thank you for all your beautiful training. Uh, Carola, uh, Gabriel, thank you for all that you've done. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a very happy holidays, and we'll see you soon.